This is the first in what will be a series of conversations that we will be hosting throughout the year with various members of our leadership council and also uh, those within the Concordia community from around the world. Uh, I'm very, very excited and honored to be sitting with uh, one of our founding leadership council members of Concordia, President Alvaro Uribe uh, of Colombia. Mr. President, thank you so much. Thank you, Matthew. It is a great honor for me, as always, because um, I feel great admiration for the work you do in Concordia. Well, thank you very, very much. Um, so, Mr. President, uh, first I want to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, you're here in New York uh, today. I want to talk a little bit about the relationship between the United States and Colombia, especially uh, during your administration, but also today, if you could comment about the current state of U.S.-Colombia relations. Um, and also what the partnership with the United States and especially the Bush administration when you were president meant to you. In general, Colombia has been a great partner of the United States for many, many years. The, during our administration, we received a lot of help from the United States, from President Bush. We made decisions uh, uh, for helping Colombia very important decisions. And we could advance in Colombia in security, in investment promotion, and in, 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 in what I call social cohesion, uh, in part, because we received this great help from the United States. During the, uh, at the end of my administration, in the last uh, 17 months, I coincide with President Obama, and I have not complained. The help uh, did continue. The same that uh, we have had this help during President Bush administration. At this moment, uh, I have concerns because of the evolution in Colombia. But I see that the relationships with the United States continue being the relation of uh, two very solid partner partners. Do you could you comment a little bit about the state of political leadership uh, around the world from a global perspective? Do you think that we currently, with with all everything that is happening around the world today, have a, a deficit of strong leadership, or do you see a rising generation that could produce the next set of great leaders? There are some books saying that uh, at this moment the planet has shortages of water, problems of uh, the climate change. Uh, the planet will have a great increase in demand for food. But these authors uh, write that the main problem is the lack of a strong leadership. However, when I see the European problems, the relationships between Europe and Greece, in my opinion, there is a very important leadership in uh, uh, Chancellor Merkel mm -hmm. in Germany. Absolutely. So talk a little bit about what's happening today in Colombia, how things are going with your political party, Centro Democratico, uh, and also maybe a little bit of what it's like to be in the Senate today. I, I have to be... Uh, critical in some degree. Um, my former president, uh, appar apparently, it is not convenient that uh, someone as, as I am uh, criticizes the country. But I do not criticize my country. I express my concerns because of the evolution of violence in some degree, the criminal groups that uh, were at the eve of disappearance four or five years ago, they, they have recovered from some strength. The economy has, uh, is suffering a very concerned worry, it slowed down. Uh, and I see that uh, the in, in confidence in the community of investors at this moment is uh, 
without therefore I, I am concerned because of, of these aspects in my country. Can you comment to the current security situation in Colombia? There are some areas in which uh, the security uh, has come back. Violence, violence has uh, come back. Uh, we, in some areas, it, it, it seems that we have lost the gains the country had during the eight years of what we call the government of democratic security. Do you, um, today, do you have any comments about the current or the evolving relationship between the United States and Cuba? President Reagan could say, I was determined for the collapse of the Soviet Empire. Uh, former Prime Minister Lady Thatcher would say, Reagan and I were determined in the collapse, collapse of communism. President Obama could say, I am determined in the evolution of Cuba from being a communist country to becoming a, a free country, a rule of law. But Castro, but what we Castro say, 55 years of lost time, of one revolution that abolished freedoms, abolished private initiative, without progress for the country. And what could uh, happen in Cuba in the years to come? I cannot say, because uh, they, they have a to enact laws to provide the private sector with opportunities to prosper in Cuba. However, I don't know the international private sector will trust mm -hmm. in the current Castro administration in Cuba to take their, their money and to make their investments. Therefore, it is not only a question of legislation, it is also a question of confidence. Therefore, we need to wait and see. You see a lot of comments uh, today, a lot of uh, remarks being made by Pope Francis, engaging in political conversations, everything from climate change to U.S.-Cuba relations. Uh, what do you think of this new Pope, and what, what do you think of how he's uh, engaged in poli very strong political debates recently? Susan Tidant, his sanctity. Uh, uh, Susan Tidant, as we call the Pope in Spanish, in my opinion, has been in equilibrium, in a very balanced speech, because uh, he has expressed his concerns on the climate change, but without sculpt the private sector. He has uploaded the new phase of the relationship between the United States and Cuba, but he has not complemented the communist regime of Cuba. Very clever man. Very smart man. I agree. Um, how is, one of the things and one of your great legacies from being president was that you brought tourism back to Colombia in a very significant way. Uh, have you continued to see uh, after leaving office that that has risen? Do you still see uh, new things being built, uh, new hotels, more cruise ships? I remember that was a very big thing for you when you were president of having the cruise lines come and stop at ports up in Colombia. Of course. Uh, it, it continues. Fortunately, we, we, I want to mention 
to items that were crucial in my administration for Colombia to recover uh, in international visit, foreign visitors. First, democratic security. And second, uh, domestic facilities. We enacted a law giving the owners of new hotels a 30-year tax exemption of national taxes. And the country has passed from having 84,000 hotel rooms to having over 200,000. Wow. In, in every part of the country now you, you can find a very comfortable hotel. In, in closing, uh, as you know, Concordia focuses on public-private partnerships. Uh, how important was it for you as president to not only have very good relationships with the private sector, but also how important was it for you as president to build public-private partnerships as part of your agenda? It is necessary. The only way to build airports, to build uh, uh, highways, uh, to expand ways to finance, for example, new enterprises is through partnerships between the, the government and the private sector. Uh, well, thank you very much for joining us for this first interview and in what will be a series throughout the year. We'd also like to thank Eurasia Group and our leadership council member, Ian Bremer, uh, for their hospitality today. Thank you very much.